gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I finally get to do the video I've been dying to make for you guys for some time. I just haven't been able to get the GPUs in order to do it. And it's going to be our RX 480, the reference model 480, up against the closest thing I can get to reference GTX 1060. This is the Turbo Edition. So these are the exact same models of card as I did last time. So it's almost the perfect retest I could possibly do. This is the same RX 480 as uh, I did, used last time. And this is not the same um, GTX 1060, but it's the exact same model, the ASUS Turbo model. Now this is pretty much identical to the Founders Edition GTX 1060. The only difference being that obviously it has the different cooler on it. It has this plastic cooler, which um, is probably inferior to the Founders Edition cooler, if I'm being perfectly honest with you guys. So it's the Founders Edition uh, is probably a bit better than this model. So let's jump into it then with the GPUs. So in the uh, 1060, you get the 16 nanometer GP106 Pascal GPU. And over in the 480, you get the 14 nanometer Polaris 10 GPU. So that means 2,304 stream processors over on the 480. And on the 1060, you're getting 1,280 CUDA cores. Now clock speeds wise, so this is important. So this is the exact same as, uh, well this is the exact same card as I tested last time, and the clock speed's exactly the same. Uh, 1,266 megahertz. Now this 1060 on the other hand, of course they use GPU Boost uh, 3.0. So that did boost up slightly similar, but it was only, uh, it boosted up to 1,906 megahertz, and I think the previous one I tested from memory was 1,911 megahertz. So a tiny, that, that's not going to make any difference, guys, to performance. Like maybe 0, 0.0 or something of a frame. But yeah, really it's going to make um, no difference at all in that regard. So let's talk about TDPs then. So 150 watt TDP for the 480 and a 120 watt TDP for the 1060. Now memory wise, so the uh, 480, this is an 8 gigabyte model. So that means you're getting 8 gigs of GDDR5 memory at 8,000 megahertz on a 256-bit bus. The 1060, this is a uh, 6 gigabyte model, so you get 2 gigs less memory there. So uh, 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory at 8,000 megahertz, so both at the same speed, but on a smaller bus, a 192-bit bus. So a bit of a difference there. Now let's quickly talk about the coolers. So these are both a reference design, which means they exhaust all the hot air out of the rear of the graphics card. Um, these are good if you want to just keep the hot air out of your case. Generally, they'll be a bit more noisy than their uh, more non-reference counterparts. Uh, but they're quite good, especially if you're going to run multiple GPUs, although you can't do that with the 1060. You can with the 480. Um, so that's quite good also. But in general, yeah, these don't have as good a cooling performance as their non-reference counterparts, but at least generally they bring down things like CPU temps because that hot air isn't just getting blown around in your case, it's getting exhaust out, exhausted out the back of your case. Now with all that being said and done, uh, let's jump into the benchmarks. This is actually the most benchmarks I've ever done, and I threw in uh, a new one there, Ghost Recon Wildlands, to show what like a brand new game goes like on these so i try to make this as fair as possible to give you guys the most fair representation so there's synthetics in there there's nvidia games in there there's amd games in there there's directx 11 and directx 12 games and they're all sort of like from different um well there's some that are a bit older and there's obviously like wildlands is a very new game so i just try to give you guys the best representation possible um, if you're going to buy one of these graphics cards, this will give you the best idea, in my mind anyway, uh, of what performance you can expect. So without further ado, let's jump to the benchmarks and see how these cards perform on their latest drivers.
see there another big win for the GTX 1060. It won in most of the games and at 1080p it really did pull a decent gap in some of those titles, even AMD titles. Like Dirt Rally is an AMD title and the 1060 wins handily in that game. So yeah, this, this is similar to what we saw before uh, in my original testing, the 1060 won in most of the games and that is also the case here. However, that's only really at 1080p we're seeing that big gap. Once we go up to 1440p, the RX 80 really starts to rein in the 1060. Um, it becomes very close there with the difference being probably not enough for most people to even notice. And at 4K, they're pretty much identical in most of the benchmarks. So that's quite interesting there. I think that may be due to the uh, memory bus, just the memory in general, the 480 being able to utilize it better at those higher resolutions. But in general, since the majority of gamers do game at 1080p, it still is a win for the GTX 1060. There's just no two ways about it, guys. You saw the same results I did. That's the conclusion I have to draw. Now, I'm not going to be covering temps and noise and stuff like that in this video because they're exact same as what we did before. So if you want to see those, I'll leave the link to my original uh, 480 versus 1060 showdown and you can check that out and that will show all the um, temperatures and noise and all of that testing also. But this one was mainly just to compare the performance. Now, that being said, if we add all those benchmarks together, the RX 480 scores an average FPS of 41.6, which is still very solid and very good. The 1060 on the other hand still wins, coming in with an average FPS of 46.7. That is very nice there. One thing I will note is that it was almost running out of video memory in uh, Wildlands on Ultra, because I test all those games are tested on the highest presets at 4K. Now of course you wouldn't do that, you saw the frames in there. It was like 15, so obviously you would never do that, but it was running like, you know, nearly to its 6 gigs. So that was kind of, kind of an interesting thing to see there. But yeah, aside from that, um, I would still have to recommend the 1060 in New Zealand because uh, it's a pretty much the same price as the 480. However, depending on where you live, um, if the 1060 is the same price as a 480, then of course, go for the 1060. You're going to get that better performance. However, if you are somewhere where maybe the RX 480 is like uh, 50 US dollars cheaper or something like that, um, then yeah, you would really start. If it's $50 or more, um, ex you know, to, to buy the, the 1060 over the 480, then I would really start to consider it because you have to then weigh, is it worth all that extra money then for those few extra frames and some of those benchmarks? And especially if you're gonna be playing at 1440p, um, then I would just go for the RX 480 straight away because the difference there is negligible. So yeah, that's basically how I have to round out this video. Um, the RX 480 is still a good graphics card, but from my numbers and my testing, the GTX 1060 is still the better one to buy. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please uh, subscribe to my channel, Tech Showdown, if you haven't already. And if you want to support me, I'll leave a link to my Patreon in the description down below. It really helped me out, guys. I don't really ask for support much, but um, I do really like it when you guys um, donate and, and help support the channel. It's really, really great. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.